ACO power or ACO power sent me a mobile 200 watt solar unit. This actually also includes a uh, solar charge controller. And I brought it clear out here so you can see how easy it is to transport or handle. We're going to have a look at it in this video and see if this is a good solution for those of you who are looking for a mobile solar setup that you can use for uh, road trips, tent camping, car camping, many different things. They also sent me a 100 amp hour 12 volt lithium ion battery so we can use that for testing it out and charging and see how it works. It comes in a real nice carrying bag, has a zipper flap here on the back. You can put all your extra cords and cables in it. And then of course this has a zipper as well and you can pull the panel out of here. Let's do that right now. And then I'll bring it inside and we'll look at it on a table where we can see it a little bit better as I open it up. But it's really just that simple. And then there's some magnets that hold the handles together and you can unfold it. So we'll take it in, we'll unfold it on the table and have a look at it. All right, first off, let's have a look at the dimensions. It's about two feet, two and a half inches. And then width-wise, we're looking at just a hair over 31, about 31 and a quarter. And the thickness is two inches. And here's a uh, look at the battery that they sent me. This is a iStar Power 12 volt, 100 amp hour LiPo 4 battery. So opened up, of course, it's still the 31 inches or so tall and not including the handles. Now we're looking at about 54 inches, 57 and a half, including the handles as far as width. It says peak power, two at 100 watts. Circuit voltage is 23.4 volts. I'll just give you a picture of that tag rather than reading it to you and you can check it out. A lot of cabling in here, connectors, solar charge controller. Now this is a 20 amp PWM solar charge controller. Had a plastic bag in there. We've got a user manual for the uh, panel, user manual for the solar charge controller, and then a warranty card to uh, activate your warranty. And I'm not sure what the warranty period is on this. You could check it out on the ACO or ACO Power website. I'll leave links to all of this gear in the video description so you can check that out. And then on the back, both halves have a uh, have a kickstand. I think it's aluminum, it feels like. A lightweight kickstand props out so you can set the panel up. Look like a long extension here with a couple of alligator clips and a, a connector for different types of connections. This has a 15 amp fuse in here and it actually comes with the fuse in it. And this is where you would clip this directly to a battery. And then it's got MC4 connectors and MC4 connectors on these two panels that are connected together. So when you connect this together, this will connect the solar panels to the charge controller. But before you do that, just general practice, you should always connect a battery first and then connect the solar panels. So that's pretty much what it entails and that's pretty simple. Unfold it, set it up with the kickstands, which I'll show you here in a second, and then connect it to your battery. So let me go ahead and do that and we can plug in this battery to it. We'll see what we get on this PWM 20 amp charge controller by Echo Power. So the simplicity and ease of use of this particular solar system is it, it couldn't get much simpler so two zippers take the panel out of the bag and then I like to open it up and see just enough to find out where the charge controller is it's on this end right up here where it says echo power so I want that to be the top stand it up and unfold it. Then you'll open up these props and set it backwards. That's it. And I like the rigidity of the panel. If you need to adjust it or move it around, adjust it for the for the sun. Really nice. I, I like the setup. Lightweight, simple to use. And I, I do like it 
better than some of those floppy kind of panels. Semi-rigid with, uh, looks to me like it's a maybe a combination aluminum frame with plastic corners on it, but uh, really nice. And when you're done with it, snap the little legs back in place. And the hardest part is just making sure you get the wires out of the way so when you close it, they don't get pinched. And that'll go back in your dusty bag because it's been laying on the ground. So you could pull this thing out at a truck stop or a rest stop if you're going to take an hour nap or something. Unfold it, charge your battery. Maybe you're using it to charge a, a portable power station or something like that. Put a little power into it, fold it back up, throw it in the trunk and off you go. Then I wanted to talk just a little bit about the battery that they sent. Here's some information on top. It's a 12 volt, 100 amp hour, 1280 watt. Standard charge current is 20 amps, maximum 50 amps. So it's 100 amps output max. Life cycle, 2000 cycles at 100% depth of discharge and then up to 5000 cycles at 80% depth of discharge. So if you don't completely drain it, just drain it down to 80%, you'll get an extra three years out of the life of the battery. Some pretty good information here on top of the battery. Here's what it looks like on the front and then I thought this was kind of cool. And it has a, comes with a carrying strap. Also comes with plastic caps and the uh, bolts for the battery. It's got a lot of information right here, just right stuck right onto the back of the battery. You can pause that if you want to read more of it. Pretty nice little battery. All right, so looking at the back of the solar suitcase, you've got two little junction boxes here that are tying the two panels together, and then you've got some MC4 connectors, positive and negative, that come off of that. So that's your connectors for the solar panel. The charge controller is, by the way, a 12 or 24 volt, so it looks like you can set up your system with either 12 or 24 volts and then it has one cable that comes in for solar so you can connect it to this panel and then you've got I measured it this is a 10 foot cable that connects to your battery so you could put this out in the sun and maybe park your vehicle or your battery or your uh, maybe you're going to use it for recharging a, uh, a portable power station you could put that in the shade and put the panel in the sun if you got that 10 foot cord. But we're just gonna connect the battery to start with. This battery has about 13 volts in it. I'll bring you in a little bit closer, but I wanted to show you how this connects. So now that you have the uh, battery connected, we can connect the solar panel. And it's not facing the sun right now, so I'm not expecting a lot, but you've get, just got male and female connectors, so you can't get this wrong as you connect the panel itself to the charge controller. So I'll bring it a little bit closer. We'll have a quick look at the uh, charge controller itself. And then we'll set it out in the sun and see what happens. See if we can get some charge out of it. Another feature I'm noticing here is it has a temp sensor for uh, charging batteries in cold temperatures. It'll probably change the algorithm for the charge voltages and so forth. But that temp sensor is optional apparently. It does not come in the kit. This flashing on the orange here indicates that solar is connected and working but it's weak it will be solid if you're getting uh, good solar to the panels if you get any shade on some panels they won't produce any power at all but you can have this partially shaded and still be producing some power and this uh, does have a backlit screen again another great feature so for the battery types you got looks like crystal Calcium, gel, AGM, wet, LFP is lithium iron phosphate. Sorry about the noise. My neighbor's doing some landscaping over there. And, oh, that's LTO, lithium iron oxidized. And then that says lithium ion. So we need to go back to LFP for lithium iron phosphate which is the first selection of the three under the lithium ion battery selection. 
And that's basically all there is to it. Select your battery type. You can switch between amps and volts and then different light settings for different phases of the charge sequence. And this does have a piece of Velcro behind it so that this Velcros to the back of the solar panel. I've got the battery sitting right here at the edge of the garage and then the solar panel is out in the sun and I've got kind of a semi partially cloudy day today. It's not perfectly aligned with the sun but it's enough to where I can show you what the panel looks like on the charge controller once we're actually getting a charge into the battery. But here we've got full sun on the panel. We're getting 3.9 amps, 4 amps. So it's sun's coming out from behind a cloud right now. Solid light here on the orange showing full full sun on the on the panel and then the various stages of charge so we're like right down in here somewhere it's kind of hard to see that light from this angle yeah flashing blue on this particular icon so we're about eh, just about half full on the battery it looks like 13.2 volts on the battery right now and 3.9 amps so that's real handy here's what I've got that uh, case covering one half so we're only getting at the most a hundred watts under ideal conditions and let's see what we're getting on the charge controller yeah wow we're showing 3.9 with the uh, case on the panel and I'm gonna remove the case let's see where that puts us 7.8 with both panels in the sun and then we'll cover one half and see where that puts us hard to do with one hand 2.9 so we're getting about half so that's pretty cool so it's true you do get some shade protection if your solar panel is being partially shaded by a tree or something you'll still get power out of this lightweight portable solar suitcase all right i did a little bit of adjusting so you can tell by this shade that it's about directly pointed directly at the sun so the sun's up pretty high in the sky and I'm just using whatever angle the the uh, kickstands give me it looks like it might be a 30 35 just I'm just guessing I don't honestly I don't know and let's see what we're getting on power 8.9 amps that is really good this is only capable of about 10 amps maximum just slightly over 10 amps 10.1 or whatever it was 0.6 amp hours gone into that battery so far since I hooked it up and the battery's sitting at 13.3 volts under the uh, lithium iron phosphate battery setting so real nice setup not only can you use the included cables to connect and charge a battery you can just use the solar panel itself and bypass the included charger if you have like say a power station so this is the all powers R600 and it has an XT60 plug for the solar and uh, that this cable does not come with the solar suitcase but it came with my portable power station but you can take your cable as long as you have MC4 connectors on one end connect that to the solar panels just these junction boxes that connect the solar panel itself We'll plug that into the portable power station. 138, 139 watts. And uh, it'll have that charged up in no time. It says one hour, I think, to have it full. Pretty good results. All right, let's have a look and do a test on the uh, IP68 waterproof rating. All right, we're going to test the IP68 waterproof rating on this AquaPower 200 watt solar suitcase. Lightweight and portable. I just wanted to show you that it's actually charging and I'm going to hit this with more water than you would normally get in a rain shower. Not worried about the front of the panel so much. Mostly this uh, charge controller would be my main concern sitting out in the rainstorm or something like that. I don't think rain would hit it quite that bad in a rainstorm. But you never know.
All right, let's look and see what our charge controller is showing. Only one amp. We got clouds now. The, the sun went behind a cloud right there. But we're still pulling in one amp. 0.2 on the amperage that's been put in the amp hours and 13.2 volts. Still ticking away and still indicating that we're charging. Lights are still working, so I'm convinced. I'm convinced it would definitely handle a rainstorm. If you had to sit out, like say at a picnic site or your campsite or a rest stop or something like that, and a downpour came, you could hop inside, get yourself out of the rain, and looks like you'd be all right. All right, excellent.